The majestic ruins of Conway Castle dominate the landscape and the town below and is visited by thousands of tourists every year. But what is the history of this marvel of medieval engineering? The castle's construction was ordered by the English king Edward I after his second campaign to conquer Wales in 1282-83. In the spring of 1283, the site for the new castle was established as part of a ring of castles encircling the Welsh heartland of Snowdonia. Construction began swiftly, with labour being drafted in from all over England. The progress of the building work is well documented, even recording the names of those who worked the site, such as Sir John Bonvillas, who was in charge of the site, James of St George, mason and engineer, or to name two. Work on the castle moved at astonishing speed, with the towers and walls to be the first constructed to serve as a defensive shell while the internal buildings were built. By November 1284, a massive sum of £5,800 had been spent, equivalent to around £18 million today. By the autumn of 1285, the construction of the walls and towers was complete, and work began on the buildings within. Being built alongside the great hall and chambers for the king and queen was the town walls, beginning with the most vulnerable landward sections along the northern and western sides. In 1286-87, works on the castle were completed, though the records of this period have not survived. The total cost of the castle and town walls came to a massive £15,000, around £45 million today. Though Edward I ordered the castle's construction and had it built with royal chambers, he spent very little time at Conway. Edward visited the castle just once and was in less than ideal circumstances. In December 1294 and the following January, Edward was forced to spend Christmas at the castle as he had been cut off from his army by floods. The chronicler Walter of Giesborough records that there was a shortage of supplies with a single barrel of wine which was safe for the king but Edward refused the wine and said in hardship everything must be held in common all of us must have exactly the same as God on high watches over us all I am the start of all this and I should do no better than you soon after the floods receded and Edward's army crossed to the king defeating the Welsh rebels. The future Edward II stayed at Conway in April and May 1301 to receive homage as Prince of Wales rather than at his birthplace, the unfinished Carnarvon Castle. The castle fell into decline during the reign of Edward II and in a survey of 1321 it was recorded that the castle was defective with timbers and lead roofs being a particular concern. The armoury was also recorded as being in a poor condition. Only 10 out of 30 crossbows were usable, and all 21 bows had no bowstrings, and most of the food supplies were rotten. Though some repairs were made, little improvement was recorded in a second survey in August 1343. Again, the castle contained quantities of useless weapons and ammunition, along with rusty coats of mail and plate armour. The Great Hall, two drawbridges, a granary, a stable and 18 other rooms were deemed as weak and ruinous. Under the Black Prince, attempts were made to bring the castle back to an acceptable condition, with work concentrating on the Great Hall in the outer ward. Nevertheless, the castle had fallen into decay again by 1390. Despite the ruinous state, Richard II took refuge in the castle as he fled from the forces of Henry Bolingbroke, the future Henry IV. During the Welsh Rebellion of 1401, the castle fell into the hands of Owain Glyndor. For three months the castle held out against the English before they surrendered. 
the Welsh rebels' capture of the castle, though short-lived, served as a rallying cry to gather more support from the Welsh people. The garrison was then reinforced during the turbulent years of the Wars of the Roses, and little was recorded about its fortunes. In the 1520s and 1530s, during the reign of Henry VIII, the castle and town walls were repaired. The castle was then used as an armament store and prison for petty criminals and debtors. Despite the efforts to maintain the castle, Conway was far from political power and the need for huge castles to keep the Welsh under control became less and less apparent. In 1627, Conway Castle finally passed out of royal ownership when it was purchased by the Secretary of State to the King, Edward, 1st Baron of Conway, for the sum of £100. A detailed survey of the castle taken the same year detailed that the castle was very near to a ruin, with building after building being listed as collapsing or missing. During the English Civil War of the 1640s, Conway was held by the Royalist John Williams, the Archbishop of York, who was born in the town. King Charles I wrote to Williams in 1643, promising that the cost of repairing the castle would be repaid, and that no other shall be set over him. The King went back on his promise when he appointed John Owen as Governor of Conway, and Williams then switched to the Parliamentarian side. The castle was then besieged by a parliamentarian army under the command of Major General Thomas Myton in August 1646. The town was swiftly taken, but the castle held out until November and was one of the last three in the country to be taken. After the hostilities of the Civil War deceased, it was decided that Conway Castle should remain operational and any damage inflicted caused by the siege should be repaired. It was believed at the time that the castle should serve as an encampment for artillery and as a secure place to hold prisoners. This idea was short-lived as in 1655 the Council of State ordered that Conway should be slighted. In 1665, the castle was returned to Edward Conway, the future first Earl of Conway. Edward had the castle surveyed, which deemed the castle to be ruinous. Edward then ordered that the castle be stripped of its lead and ironworks. Almost immediately, the castle ruins began to fascinate travellers and artists. In 1865, Conway Castle passed from the Holland family who had leased it from the descendants of the Conways to the civic leadership of Conway Town. Restoration work on the ruins then began, including the restoration of the damaged bakehouse tower. In 1953, the castle was leased to the Ministry of Works and Arnold Taylor undertook a wide range of repairs and extensive research into the castle's history. Already protected as a scheduled monument, in 1986 it was also declared part of the World Heritage Site of the castles and town walls of King Edward. In the 21st century the castle is managed by Cadu as a tourist attraction with a new visitor centre which opened in 2012. Today Conway Castle is a fascinating place to explore and is an absolute must for anyone who likes history. <laughs>